There's a place in Singapore where evil entities are supposedly dumped by spiritual masters after performing their cleansing rituals. This forest is also known to be a place to bury cursed items said to be holding evil spirits. Tonight we're going deep into the jungle of what used to be Kampong Wak Hassan to see how cursed this land actually is. But why does this forest have such an infamous history? Nestled near Zambawang Road, this area once housed one of Singapore's most resilient Malay villages. Kampong Wak Hassan had a long history dating back to 19. However, in the late 1980s, residents of this village were forced to relocate to make way for urban redevelopment. It is said that the villagers cursed this land when they were forced to relocate and that the lost souls from people in this fishing village are still hanging around. There have also been multiple sightings of Pontianaks lingering on the trees in this forest. But enough of spooky rumours and haunting legends. Let's actually find out how haunted this place actually is. Alright, let's start tonight's exploration. We are currently at Jalan Mempurong and I just heard dogs how so that's a little bit concerning. Hopefully we don't run into any of them. Come on guys! As you can see, there is a forest to our left and our right and it is said that shamans in the past used to dispel or cast these evil entities into these forests. These trees are quote-unquote alive because there are people who would put statues of deities and offerings at the base of these trees to worship these trees. Some say that you might get lucky if you worship these trees. Maybe you can strike 40, strike the lottery. So let's see if you can actually find any of these deities or statues. But before we invest in tonight's exploration of Kampong Wak Hassan, there's something else I'd like to invest in with the Okta app. If you've always wanted to dip your toes into the world of trading, you can now do so with the Okta app because I feel like they have very user-friendly and beginner-friendly tools for you to help navigate the precarious waters of trading. I'm not going to act like a trading guru, I'm just a consumer, but I think Okta is one of the most user-friendly platforms for trading. So this is my virtual account as you can see and I'm going to get some ETH. Alright, and I just bought some ETH. It's super simple, just a few clicks and I already got some. And good golly gee, do I have a good deal for you guys. Right now, Okta is offering a two-time bonus on your first deposit. So if you deposit $500, you get $1,000 for trading. Wow! I want to reiterate that trading comes with inherent risk, so please, please do not squander your hard-earned money away. Only invest what you can afford. The good news is Okta provides a ton of educational materials for you as well, such as online seminars and live trading sessions. So if you are looking for a user-friendly app to start your trading journey, you can download the Okta app in the link in the description or by scanning the QR code somewhere in this video. And use this code SUSHI for 2 times bonus on your first deposit. I don't really see any deities or any offerings. I just see a lot of litter everywhere. Like, look at this. Who the hell put tiger soju here? Who the hell is drinking here? In the middle of this road? What the fuck? Oh, what? Yo, there really are offerings here. Look at this. I'm surprised that it's a Chinese offering. It looks very wealthy, a wealth offering on this tree. I wonder why though, like why this tree and how do they decide? Please let me know in the comments what this is. It's an offering for sure, but I want to know like what? Like, what does it represent? Probably wealth, right? Because it's very golden and shiny. But yeah, I don't think it's a deity. I don't see any iconography or any gods on this thing. But I guess it's just an offering to this tree. So they say if you worship the trees here, you can get good luck and it will bless you. I should try that, right? Paying my respects to you, tree. Whatever or whoever is here, paying my respects. Sorry, I don't have an offering right now. Thank you for protecting this road. Actually, let's try I have my EMF reader. Anything on this tree? Anything sitting on this tree? Hi, are you the entity protecting this tree? Or inhabiting this tree? Do you like your offering? Interesting. I guess the rumours are true that people do worship the trees along here. Yeah, maybe this tree is alive. I'm going to sayang it a bit. Oops, shit. Sorry for peeling your skin. As I reached the end of the road, I came across a mosque, Masjid Patan Patan Melayu, which translates to Malay Settlement Mosque. This mosque was built in the 1960s by residents of a former village that has now been demolished. The building of this mosque was a community effort, with each household in the area contributing a small monthly sum until there was enough to buy building materials for its construction. And what's fascinating is that it's one of the last surviving remnants of what used to be a thriving kampong in Sambawang. Till today, there have been reports of chanting, 
crying sounds and even eerie children's laughter in the immediate vicinity of this mosque. But I didn't really hear anything other than the screaming lullabies of cicadas. It was a beautiful mosque though, but then I found the entrance to this very creepy forest, which I would soon find out is home to many religious idols. Let's uh, head in, but before that, who ate Ota and just left it here? Who? Stop littering. Can't you just throw it away? Let's head in. I see something red in there. Let's go check it out. So far, nothing on the EMF reader yet. I just felt a gust of wind on my right hand. Probably just the wind, but I felt the hairs just stand up this side. Weird. It is a it is a red chair. Anyone sitting on this chair? No? Yeah, it appears to be a makeshift shelter and a coconut over here. And a lizard. Oh my god, do you see the lizard? Look at that cute little baby lizard eating the coconut. Mmm, yummy. This looks like a fishing spot. So many people do come here to fish and this looks like a fishing spot. And there are a lot of spooky and haunting stories of uh, people who have come to fish here. What is that? A frying pan. Small little kitchen over here. Nice. Uh, I just realised that this tree has many statues of deities. How did I miss that? Oh, look at that. But uh, yeah, just a mix of different deities. Very interesting. But funnily enough, there's a bag of trash right beside it. So it's a bit confusing. Like, are you paying respects to this tree or... or what? As mentioned earlier, many people, especially in Asian cultures, believe that trees are alive or that they are host to entities or spirits. That's probably why this tree is being worshipped. But my question is, why this tree and what is the history behind it? Unfortunately, I couldn't find anything online about this tree. But if you guys have any info on this, please let me know in the comments. I'm currently by the tree with uh, all the deities over there. Just set up my ramp pod, see if we can capture anything. Funnily enough, EMF is spiking at 3 bars, right as I squat down 3 bars. Hi, thank you for touching this EMF reader if there's anything here. It's just flickering intermittently. We mean you no harm, just wanna say hi. If there's anything here, can you come and touch the rampart over there? Can you make it go off? It's gonna wait a while. EMF is just at steadily at one bar. Anything here they would like to make our presence known, I'm inviting you to come. Okay, right, so I said that three bars. Uh, hi, thank you for coming. If there's anything, if I'm even talking to anything. Are you a spirit? If you're a spirit, can you make it go to three bars? Come closer and it'll spike higher. Come on, you gotta do better than that. Show me, show me that you exist. Go to three bars, come on. Come on, come on baby. A little bit weak. Can you make it go to three bars? Mm, maybe it's not strong enough, I don't know. Oh, there we go, three bars. Are you a male spirit? Are you male? If you're a male, oh, okay, yes, you're a male. Three bars immediately. Did you used to stay in Kampong Wak Hassan? Did you used to stay in one of the villages here? No? Yes? Do you have any unresolved issues? Is that why you are still here? Three-ish? Do you want me to stay and continue talking with you? It's a very indecisive ghost. Everything is one. Not very opinionated, I guess. Do you mind touching that ramp for me over there? It's been a while since the ramp go off. Oh, three bars, yes? Are you gonna go touch it now? If there's anything here, can you make a sound? Make a noise? Make a scratching noise? Hit something? That one leaf over there is shaking though. <laughs> it's it's like it's beckoning for me to come. Okay, I'm gonna leave now. Uh, last chance, last call. Anything you wanna touch this rampart? If not, I'm fucking off. Okay, I'm leaving. I'm gonna go to that leaf over there that's asking me to come. You heard that? <laughs> something was moving on the ground. I heard something moving on the ground. Something just scuttled across the floor like that. I'm gonna go check out this uh, sexy leaf that's moving. Why is this leaf moving? Is there a wind? I don't feel any wind though. Why is it moving? Can you see it moving? Yeah. Huh. Another deity here. 
I wonder why the face is covered. There are a lot of deities strewn around in this forest. It's very interesting. Yeah, yeah but this deity has its face covered. I wonder why. Uh, anyone know the reason? Please let me know in the comments. But as you can see here, one, two, three, four, five. Five little statues and deities around. There's a tiger one over there, I think. Is that a tiger? I wonder why. I guess this forest really has something meaningful or... AMF is spiking. Hi, is there anything here? You mean you no harm? Can you... Goosebumps. Just had chills. Thank you for touching this EMF reader. If there's anything here, paying my respects to you. If there's anything here... Um, are you still here? Do you want me to stay and talk? Can you come and touch this EMF reader? Are you a male spirit? Are you female? Doesn't want to answer anymore. And the EMF is dead. That was quite chilling. <laughs> the EMF is gone. Yeah, but uh, I wonder why there are deities here. There must be something significant in this forest or about this forest. Is it because it's haunted? That's why people put deities here? I'm not so sure. Is this a very lucky forest? Maybe it's for protection for all the spirits that were, that were cast out here in this forest. But let's keep going. So I think we found the gate. It's right there. Not sure if you guys can see. That should be the gate. Let's go have a closer look. The reason I've been looking for this gate throughout the night was because it has quite an interesting history. This gate was the entrance to one of four seaside bungalows built in the 1960s. And according to this timeline, it coexisted with the other kampongs around the area, including Kampong Wak Hassan. But it's super cool that this is the only thing left of a bygone era. But also super weird that they demolished everything but forgot to remove this gate. I wonder why. So I'm in front of the gate right now. So it is not really sure why this gate was left intact and just left here because everything else, the villagers and the bungalows that used to be here were all demolished except for this gate. Shortly after entering the gate, I experienced one of the strongest EMF presents I've ever had. Okay, very strong tree bars here. This area. Strong presence, perhaps. It's here. So we just entered uh, the gate and then there's quite a strong reading here. Okay, I'm gonna place my ramp pod right here. So the EMF reading is quite strong here. Three bars, I got my ramp pod behind. Right, there seems to be a very strong presence over here. If there's anything here that I would like to say hi, I'm inviting you to come and touch the ramp pod behind there. Hello, if there's anyone, any uh, deities, any spirits that have been cast out, come here. I'm inviting you to come. You can touch me, make my hair stand. So there seems to be just a wave or something here, just right here. If I bring it further, it's gone. It's right here. It's right beside me. Are you sitting on my knee, naughty fella? So cheeky you. Are you sitting on my knee? Go and touch it. I dare you to touch the rampart. Touch it. Do you want me to stay and talk? Okay, yes. I guess that's a yes. I'm gonna try the spirit box. Hi, is there anything here that wants to communicate? Hi, is there anything here? What is your name? If there's anything here, can you tell us your name? That was a long ass phrase, probably one of the longest I've ever heard. Do you have a name? I thought I heard it say hello. I thought I heard it say I am Muslim. I think, I think, or maybe it was telling me its name. We then decided to go for a walk along the shore and we spotted this strange streak of light in the sky. Thus, we firmly concluded that it's an alien. But as we were heading back to conclude our exploration for the night, this is when Star had his most spine-chilling experience ever, according to him. Where's the face? This one? Yeah? Is it a face? It is. You see, you see the Oh yeah, yeah. So it's a little face over there that's actually very scary. We're gonna go slightly closer to check it out. Oh, let's head in. You okay, right? Yeah. Just go a bit, a bit nearer. It's a kaira. I'm not sure why there is that thing over there. Looks like, I don't know, a deity, a baby. And there's one more over here on the left. Are these just decorations? I'm not so sure. Can't go? I'm scared, but 
deeper inside there. Yeah, I don't know if these things are for worship purposes or not, but this is the first time I've seen anything hands down at all like this. Please let me know in the comments what these are. This looks like a board with a picture on it. It's very creepy. Uh, I'm not sure what's in there though. Looks like a dead end. I'm not so sure. Yeah, but I'm not gonna disrespect anything by going in there. Yeah. Staring at it, yeah. At the face. Yeah. Lucky my eyes are not good. I couldn't see the face from so far. Was there a face? <laughs> Maybe someone put it there on purpose to scare scare people. Yeah. As we were heading out, we also met a cute paranormal hunting couple who had some crazy ghost hunting tech that made me look like a caveman. So far, anything around tonight? Yesterday, yes. Uh, you came here yesterday also? Uh, yesterday, we go for a of things. Uh, uh, what happened? Pontiana <laughs> on the Pocho in Singapore. Oh. He sell all these things? Uh? Yeah. So this one was like, scan, scan for entities? Uh? Uh, Extract? To open the energy to make the entity. Cut. Don't distract your torchlight, all your equipment. Uh. Mm. So it focus on this. Uh, the energy they take from here. Oh uh, yeah, because sometimes they will drain the battery yeah, from your camera, all yeah. these kind of things. Yeah. This was a fun night. It still amazes me that we have spots like these dotted around the country. Who knows which other pockets of the country hold secrets like these. Thank you for watching and for joining me on my adventure. Consider subscribing if you enjoyed this video and I'll see you guys soon.